Hi, I'm Tim Tyler, and this is a video which responds to one of Steven Pinker's criticisms of memetics, the one where he points out that most words do not evolve and rather are intelligently designed. In my book on memetics, which is out now, I take a look at some of the critics and criticisms of memetics. Steven Pinker is one of these critics. Pinker expressed a number of objections to memetics in a 2009 Harvard lecture. Here, we will look at his claim that most words did not evolve via a process of blind mutation and selection, and rather were designed. Here is Stephen on the topic. Also, in the case of words, uh, there are occasional instances in the history of words in which a, an undirected blind variation becomes entrenched in a community and changes the vocabulary. For example, if you look up the etymology of the word acne, it turns out that it was a misprint from acme, or uh, the <coughs> Greek word for uh, pinnacle, and that, of course, did get entr entrenched in the language. But in almost every other case, when a new word appears, it does not have a history as a set of blind variations selected subject to more blind variations and so on. Uh, and it's true that we don't, can't track down the originators of most, most new words. Uh, they occurred too long ago. But that doesn't mean that words never had inventors, that they just arose through this process of, uh, of mutation and selection, because we know that words that, that can be tracked down over the last few decades uh, uh, clearly had an origin in some stroke of creation or insight or wit that made them copyable because they appealed to the same uh, sense of need or aesthetics or uh, humor that make a, uh, a word successful. For example, palimony. Uh, that was, did not arise from a bunch of random typographical changes from alimony, but it was a witticism coming from the portmanteau of alimony and a pal. Uh, the, the loony, the Canadian $1 coin, which has a uh, loon on its reverse. Podcast came, uh, obviously came from a hybrid of iPod and broadcast. Spam from the Monty Python sketch in which a waitress mindlessly repeats the word spam, reminding a hacker of the mindless repetition of email messages. Pinker gives a series of examples of words that he claims did not arise as a result of blind mutation and selection. It is, of course, true that his examples are not the result of such processes alone. However, organic evolution is not just the result of blind mutation and selection either. There are other processes involved, and one of these is sexual recombination. In each one of Pinker's examples, it is recombination and not mutation and selection that explains the main features of the resulting word. To go through Stephen's examples of supposed invention and explain how to interpret them properly, palimony arose from pal and alimony having sex. Looney arose from loo and penny having sex. Podcast arose from iPod and broadcast having sex and spam arose from the Monty Python spam sketch and the idea of unsolicited bulk email having sex. These forms of recombination are typically the result of a breeding process, so iPod and broadcast did not just spontaneously combine to form podcast, rather they were selected and bred. However, breeding happens in the organic world as well. It is most familiar to us in the case of domesticated dogs, cats, pigeons and sheep. However, breeding is not just done by humans. So, for example, ants farm aphids and selectively cultivate fungi. So, every single one of examples that Pinker gave of word invention is better interpreted as a case of recombination, where two ideas have sex and contribute part of their own inheritance to their cultural offspring. That is not to say that no words are ever invented from scratch by intelligent designers. However, processes in memetics, which are deeply analogous to those in genetics, are evidently vastly more common and widespread than Pinker seems to realise. Indeed, a failure to consider the possibility that recombination might be involved helps to explain why Pinker doesn't think memetics is worth very much. He hasn't grasped one of its most basic and essential features. It is important to understand that there is more to evolution than blind mutations and selection. Throughout his critique, Pinker keeps emphasising that some cultural product or another is not the result of blind variation and selection. However, organic evolution isn't based only on blind variation and selection either. There are other processes going on, most notably recombination. Any conception of evolution that attempts to boil everything down to blind variation and selection is so deeply impoverished that it is incapable of modelling even organic evolution. Enjoy!